In this lecture, we'll talk about market pricing and how it signals local value. Because people and organizations want and need access to a limited supply of the products and services that other people and organizations either have on hand or have to make, all of these groups and individuals compete for access to a very limited supply, limited number of resources. Bidding among many buyers and sellers among, for different products and services so that everyone could get the best or at least a fair price can be a very inefficient process if you think about it, comparing value from one product to another. To make this process easier across many different product lines, we use an exchange currency that measures, quote, value, unquote. In the United States, we use US dollars to measure this exchange value. The common currency simplifies the bidding process and the exchange process. And so it's used to balance what is available, which is a supply, with what people want, which is demand, across many, many different product lines. These forces of supply and demand in markets are used to allocate resources in countries like the United States and other free enterprise systems. Supply and demand determines the distribution of resources and products. From your experience, you can probably recognize that consumers are usually willing to buy more of an item if the price gets lower, if it falls, it's on sale, because they want to save money for other goods and services. Demand is the number of goods and services that consumers are willing to buy at, a diff at different prices at a specific time. It's the demand curve. And supply is the number, or supply curve, is the number of products, that is goods and services, that businesses are willing to sell at different prices at a specific time. In general, because the potential for profits are higher, businesses are willing to supply more of a good or service at a higher price. There's less risk when the price is higher. You can incur a little bit of extra cost if you have to produce more than you might have on hand. You have to go out and buy more, whatever. So suppliers are willing to, do, to create, producers are willing to produce more and supply more if the prices are higher. This is the basic supply and demand. Let's consider an example of handmade rugs. Consumers may be willing to buy six rugs at $350 each, four at $500 each, but only one at $650. The relationship between the price and the number of rugs that consumers are willing to buy can be graphically shown, you can see it here, with a demand curve. A company that sells rugs may be willing to sell six at $650 each, four at $500 each, but just two at $350. The relationship between the price of rugs and the quantity of rugs, the quantity of rugs that the company is willing to supply, willing to sell, is, can be, is shown here as the supply curve. That's the, the red curve on the, on the graph. The supply and demand curves intersect at a point where supply, what people are willing to sell at a price, meets the demand that people have to pay that price. So they're willing to buy that many at that price. So that price creates a balance or an equilibrium that is stable. The price where the number of products the businesses are willing to supply equals the products that businesses are or that consumers are willing to buy is called this equilibrium price. In our rug example, the company is willing to supply four rugs at $500 each, and the consumers are willing to buy four rugs at $500 each. Therefore, $500 is the equilibrium price for a rug at that point in time. Most rug companies will price their rug at $500, with, of course, noise in the system around $500. Think about what a supplier might be willing to supply if, if he would have sell four rugs at $500 each, but he would only sell two at $350 each. 
wouldn't your initial to intuition be that the seller would either agree to sell or not? What is it? If the seller would make a large enough profit, why not sell more? Think about this. Why does the quantity matter to the seller? If the cost of making the rug goes up, or if the, rug, if the cost to ship the rugs to the store goes up due to changing oil prices, the businesses will not offer as many at the old price. Changing price alters the supply curve, and the new equilibrium price results. This is an ongoing process with supply and demand constantly changing in response to changes in the economic conditions, the availability of resources, the degree of competition. The price of a particular product at a particular moment is a signal to anyone that's in the marketplace about current conditions in the economy. This signal contains very useful information for each of us, for anyone that is willing to interpret it about what is happening in this particular marketplace. You know the relative value of various kinds of commodities and kinds of products, and therefore you can understand how you can better allocate your, your, your capital. Pricing helps allocate resources, and it helps people satisfy their demands by allocating their resources properly among the various products and services that are available. That's the underlying dynamic that is described in this supply and demand curve model. It's equilibrium price. As the prices move, you learn about how you can better allocate your resources. And that goes throughout the economy because it ripples down through the suppliers, what they buy, how much they make, all those kinds of things. That's the basic logic of the equilibrium prices. So we ask ourselves, is this a fair process? Is this a reasonable way to determine for a society who gets what resources? Who gets access to what resources? Certain critics of supply and demand say that the system doesn't really distribute resources equally. If you have more assets, you get more stuff. The forces of supply and demand prevent sellers who have to sell at a higher price because their costs are high they can't get into the marketplace, and buyers who don't have enough money can't afford to buy goods at the equilibrium price. The price is too high now, so they're not participating in the market, and they're not necessarily optimizing or maximizing their own uh, value of their environment, what they can achieve in terms of their, their sense of well-being. According to critics, the wealthy can afford to buy more than they need, but the poor may be unable to buy enough of what they need. Is there a better way? I don't know the answer to this, but this is the reason that other economic systems like socialism or communism to some degree, it's, it had been in some points or at least theory is around it, uh, they're adopted to try and alleviate some of these questions we have about inequality. Perhaps the answer is that supply and demand pricing is fair for luxury goods like vacations, but not so much for basic needs like food staples or public transportation or basic health care. This is the core or one of the core reasons that we have these political debates. It's why the government sometimes steps in to regulate markets. You want to make sure that people get safe transportation and not just transportation. You could get transportation at a lower price, but it might not be safe, those kinds of things. And this is really what most or much of the political debate in our society is all about. In the next uh, lecture, we'll start to talk about marketplace competition and some of the dynamics of that um, and how that affects allocation of resources as well.